So today I'm going to be doing the Draw My Life video and I'm going to kind of tell you guys a little bit of my life story, but I, not all of it because it's really long, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. And forgive my sucky drawing, please. I was born on April 17th, 1998 in St. Louis Park, Minnesota. Um, and again, I'm sorry for my atrocious drawings. If anyone who is being portrayed here sees these videos, I'm not trying to disfigure you. I just suck at drawing. But anyway, this is my mom. And I'm not going to tell you her name because uh, of privacy reasons. And this is my dad. And I was the first born child. If you guys watch my sister tag with Eric, with Jade, then you already know that. But that's my dad, and yes, he has glasses. And I went home the next day, and that's little baby me right there. And I was born when I told me I had some hair on my head already. And she's this fine little blonde stuff, and I slept all the time. Like, that was pretty much all I did. And then it seems like I'm going to do this crap. So that's, that's great, right? I went home the next day to a house on the middle of our street, and it was a very old house. It was built in 1918, so I was 100 years old, and it had a front porch that I loved to play on when I was a little kid with all these windows, and then it had like a second roof, and that window right there was where my room was. And yeah, it was a green trimmed white stucco house, and it was 4221 Quincy Street, and I still have the address memorized to this day. And that was my home. That's where I lived for my whole life, except for when I moved, obviously. Okay, so then, well, people put Okay, so then, on May 2nd, two years later, my sister was born. We, my parents went to the same hospital. And I said, oh, I was like, I'm going to her. And we brought her home. And I was, I don't remember any of it, probably because I was like two years old. Um, but we brought Julie home. You know, that's me trying to attend to my recreation of our house. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we brought her home. And I had stayed with my grandma, um, my mom's mom. And I brought her home, and she was so cute. I just loved her so much. She was such a cute little kid, a baby picture. You try drawing and writing, she's kind of nice. It's not easy, people. I'm just gonna say. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna say it's not easy. So, they set her down in her, um, her little baby carrier car seat thing when they got her home. And I don't know why I didn't draw my face first. I'm not really sure why I didn't do that, but... And I had really curly blonde hair at the time, in case you guys were wondering. And I also had glasses, but that's a, that's a story I'm not even going to get into here. But anyway, so uh, little lady Erica, I'm trying to draw a car seat. She was lying down in her car seat, and my very first words to her, Hi, baby for you! I know, right? But yeah, from pretty much day one, you know, she, she and I were really practically acceptable. We really loved each other, so. Okay, and my mom, another memory, not memory, is my mom told me that another thing that would always happen if we were out going grocery shopping or out and about, and this is me trying to draw a grocery shopping cart, I'm sorry, and then me sitting in it and little child. But my mom told me that every time we would go shopping or something, like people would always stop and, you know, crew over baby me, and that's what people do. But instead of going, oh, what a... What a cute baby, or she's so cute or pretty, they would always go, oh, what a beautiful baby, and I'm not really sure, like, I know she's not lying, so my doesn't lie, but, like, I'm not really sure why, that they saw me, I mean, I look like a normal baby, like, I don't know, but that's, that's actually something that I like, I don't know why, I just kind of cherish that, I guess, because, I don't know, <laughs> it just makes me feel, it makes me feel happy, I'm not sure why, but I had, um, curly blonde hair, and blue eyes. And when I got a little older, they turned green. I guess I was kind of like a kitten. That's kind of weird. Okay. Anyway. Okay, so preschool. I was homeschooled uh, due to health issues and other reasons, um, but I would always sit on the couch with my mom. 
and we would watch uh, DVDs or we would just like, she'd sit down with the binder and we would talk about our assignments and that's me trying to judge people sitting, it looks like they're slouching looking at absolutely nothing. So I apologize for that. But I had, um, it was called K5 Beginnings and I had history and English and reading and Bible time. And during preschool, that was me trying to draw a book by the way, during preschool is when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and that was probably one of the best days of my life. Another thing I remember is every time I would do math with my sister, my mom would always do flashcards with me. And I would be, I was never good at math when I was a kid. And Erica would always go over and be like, I know, I know, I know. So, you know, that's great for her. <laughs> so that annoyed me when I was little, but now I just think we find it funny. All right, and then another thing that happened is that I became, began to become more aware of the fact that I got sick a lot. And I, truly, this is me trying to draw my bed. Um, and, you know, due to my health problems, which I'm not going to explain a lot here. I'll do a separate video on all of you guys want me to, but I don't know why I didn't draw myself with hair either. I'm sorry. But I got really sick. I was really sick all the time. I always had a cold or the flu, stuffed up nose, sore throat, you name it. Um, and it wasn't any fun. But I turned to reading to entertain myself, which you guys will see more of later. Okay, uh... I don't know what I'm drawing right now, actually. Books. Okay, so in preschool, uh, by the time I was in preschool, I was very advanced at reading, probably due to the fact that I was homeschooled, and because I was sick so much, all I did was read. And I was reading very thick but I wasn't reading, like, baby books. I was reading books for elementary-aged kids. And uh, we would walk to the library all the time, and the library was, like, three blocks away, and that became my favorite hangout. And we would bring, we would get so many books from there, we would have to bring like the kitty wagon or a sled in the winter time to like drag them all home. Especially the sled work because it was like icy streets or whatever. But uh, yeah, I absolutely loved to read. I read anything I could get my hands on. My personal favorites were fantasy stories. That was me trying to draw a heart. It looks demented, I'm sorry. Also, I always had, there was this rug in the living room that I absolutely loved, and I would lie on that all the time, <coughs> reading my books, or um, sleeping, and I don't really know why, it was right in front of the TV, and I was like fine with just like, ignoring sounds and whatever, again, don't know why I didn't, why I didn't give myself hair, I'm sorry y'all, I don't really know what's going on with me right now. And I'm not sure. Oh, okay. So on my fifth birthday, which I think still counts. Yeah, that's still preschool. I don't know why I drew the table with six legs. I apologize. But anyway, on my fifth birthday, a bunch of my family members were over at my house. We were in the backyard, and I actually do remember this day. And I got this card that was Arthur. Do you guys remember the TV show Arthur? And it was like a book. And I had never started reading aloud before. Like my mom didn't know how much I could comprehend, but. At that point, I like stood up and I just started reading the card aloud and it completely surprised my parents. Like, totally. So that was one of my favorite memories because after that, my reading really took off. In elementary school, uh, not much changed. I was still homeschooled. I apparently cannot write. My E is close to my L's. <laughs> That's kind of stupid. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, in elementary school, I don't know what I'm drawing here. Hang on one sec. Oh yes, in elementary school I did start taking ballet. Um, I, my grandma suggested it up in preschool, but I took it at an actual studio for the first time. And it started in fourth grade, and at fourth grade, what, you're like, you're like 10? I think? Yeah, you're like 10 years old. And at 10 years old, just to give you guys an idea, I did do ballet and I loved it so much. I also was reading at a very advanced level. I was reading the Lord of the Rings trilogy at age 10. So I was reading at college level, which was cool. So anyway, in ballet, I loved doing leaps, but I was very sad because I couldn't do the splits because due to health problems, my body wasn't as flexible as everybody else's, so I always felt really sad that I couldn't do the splits and everybody else could. I just got very embarrassed. But I loved leaping so much, and uh, my dance teacher told me that I had really good leaps, so I was really happy because I got leg muscles, yo. 
Also in ballet class in fourth grade, I met my best friend, Ayla, who is still my friend today. And Ayla, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, I tried to do you justice and it sucked and I'm sorry. But she is a curly haired redhead with glasses and she was so funny and sweet and nice and she had the best sense of humor. We were both obsessed with Star Wars at the time and she was one of my best friends. She is my best friend now. Like, I love her so much. And she was the first quote unquote real friend I ever had so her friendship really means a lot to me. Before then I didn't have any friends at all, which was kind of sad. But, you know. Okay. What am I drawing now? I am drawing my church at that point, which I'm not going to say what the name of it is, but I'm drawing my church and we went to a, it wasn't very big, but it was, it was big enough. And it was a really large church, like the building was pretty large, so every time I would go in there I got really intimidated. And this was not the first church we went to, like we moved to churches a lot um, when I was a kid. And even you know, up until we moved, we moved churches a lot because we couldn't really find a good fit for us. But I loved Club 56, which was the youth group for 5th um, and 6th graders, and I loved going there and hanging out with the leaders um, because the husband and wife team that led it, they were really nice to me, and they really liked me. Uh, and yeah, I had a lot of fun there, we did a lot of cool events. Um, but then I was really sad all the time because I got sick so much still. I was always tired, I was always fatigued, I never got enough sleep. I was sore all the time, and I never had enough energy. Like, all my friends could be running around and playing, and I wouldn't be able to, but from the outside it looked perfectly healthy, and so I was always sad and crying because nobody understood. They all tried to, you know, oh, it's not a big deal, just blow it off, but to me it was a big deal, and it hurt my feelings a lot that they tried to do that to me. Um, so that was me trying to draw a, uh, co a concealer bottle. There we go, there's the right word, and I did a little bit better the, the second try, but, um, in sixth grade, I was allowed to start wearing under eye concealer because I didn't sleep very much because of my health, and so um, my mom allowed me to wear under eye concealer because my dark circles were so bad that I was getting teased and people were commenting on it, and it was kind of embarrassing. So yeah, that's kind of a body started on my makeup journey, but not really. Seventh grade, guys. Okay, this was the worst year of my life. Not to sound like a downer or be miss all for nothing, but seventh grade, hands down, was the worst year of my life. Forget freshman year. Freshman year was, was cake, guys. Okay, so in seventh grade, everybody moved up to the junior high, and I was still at that church. Uh, and I don't know why I didn't draw myself with honor, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but all the friends that I had, quote unquote, all of the friends that I had, they all abandoned me at the very same time, literally overnight. Like, I hung out with a bunch of them one day, and then I came to church the next, and everybody was ignoring me and ostracizing me. And they all made their own little cliques, and I felt very left out and very hurt. And I'm not going to say the names, but the top people uh, that hurt my feelings were K.A. and K.H., who was, like, the leader of pretty much everybody. Um, she, you know, was, like, the, the massy block times ten. She was very rude and mean, and I was very sad at that point to, like... Yeah, I cried a lot about it because all of my friends had abandoned me and I didn't get to see Ayla that much because she didn't go to my church and she lived kind of far away. And it got to the point where I didn't want to go to church anymore, like I wanted to go to big church with the adults instead of go up to the youth group and hang out with my age mates, which made me really sad that I wanted to do that. In seventh grade also, I started hitting puberty really early because, again, of my health. And I started breaking out so bad that I was getting like legit teased by those girls. So my mom let me wear foundation, which is what got me started like for real on makeup because I watched all these YouTube tutorials and learned how to cover up my uh, blemishes. And then at I was what 12 years old. Yeah, at age 12, I had so many pimples. My whole forehead and chin were covered with them. I was sore all the time. I was tall comparatively. Now I'm you know average height. I had B cups and I was curvy. And that made me very self-conscious compared to everybody else, uh, all the girls managed because they had perfectly clear skin, with a couple exceptions, you know. Um, they were very flexible, they were, um, you know, they were smaller, they had small chests, and they were skinny. And, you know, it made me really sad, and I got teased sometimes because, you know, my feet were bigger and everything else was bigger, and it made me really sad. Also in 7th grade, a lot of stuff happened. 7th grade was kind of my transition year, um, where I really found out myself. I joined the WordPress blogging community in October of 2010, 
and I created my, it was a life blog, it was my sweet life of style.wordpress.com and I basically wrote about my life, um, you know, just kind of random ramblings and then I still have that blog but it's now called A Step in My Stilettos and I love the WordPress community because you know, it was a place where I could, I loved writing and I could see, be myself and I met all these great girls, Lucy who inspired me to blog, Natalie from across the pond, uh, Elizabeth, another Natalie, um, Emily and Lauren and all of those girls and Avery, let's not forget Avery, all of those girls were so great to me. They were really nice, they still are, they're amazing, sweet, beautiful girls. Also in 7th grade, I was introduced to the world of Rick Riordan's books. The Percy Jackson series was my all-time favorite. It um, That's what really got me obsessed with those books. I love those books so much. Even today, I am so obsessed with them. I spent all my time reading those books because I didn't want to go to church services, so I would hang out in the office with my parents while they volunteered and read those books. And Percy Jackson, like, there's a quote from it that I love um, that kind of helped me to break out of my shell and, like, accept some things. Anyway, I also discovered fanfiction.net when I turned 13 and I created my username with paper and pen and I still write fanfiction today, obviously. Um, my favorite song at that time was Who Says by Selena Gomez, which was like the big song of the day and it, um, it was the first contemporary pop song that I listened to. Before that, all I listened to was Christian music, which there's nothing wrong with, but you know, I wanted to kind of join the ranks of pop culture. And I also got my first eyeshadow palette, uh, which was Physicians for my Physicians Formula Shimmer Strips, which, as you guys know, I still have, and I love it so much. And it really complemented my olive toned skin and my green eyes. My eyes got green at that point. The final thing that happened in seventh grade is in October, right before I started my blog, I had had really long hair. It was down to about the top of my bust, and I cut it off to my chin and it did not look very attractive looking back but I thought I looked really nice and I liked short hair and when I went to church nobody knew who I was I had to reintroduce myself they're like wait you're Amanda it was so weird in eighth grade we did leave that church that we were at because I didn't like it anymore and I wanted to find another place where I could meet new friends and so I went to this other church that was more contemporary played awesome music and I met one of my other friends Bethany so I now had two good friends which was a blessing because again it was my only friend and I also started to take guitar really seriously because there were some musicians at the church that played guitar, Bethany was one of them, and I really wanted to learn, so I started teaching myself using my mom's guitar, which is the guitar I play in my covers, um, and I really started to get into music. I loved music so much. I loved Owl City and Lincoln Park, um, some of these came later, but Owl City, Lincoln Park, Simple Plan, Kelly Clarkson, and Taylor Swift are my favorite artists now. And Lifehouse, let's not forget Lifehouse, I'm obsessed with Lifehouse. And Imagine Dragons. There's too many to list, guys. Uh, there's just too many. Okay, also in the summer of 8th grade, yes, the summer of 8th grade, I entered my first singing competition. It was called Heights Idol, and I sang two songs, Fireflies by Owl City and Price Tag by Jesse J. I did not get a prize for, I didn't get placed either time, but um, either round, but I had so much fun. I learned so much about singing, and I don't know if I have a talent for it, but it's something I like to do and I don't suck at it, so I do it. So I love, and I love the exhilaration of getting up on stage and hearing my voice through a microphone. It was, it was so much fun. Uh, yeah, okay. Ninth grade, which is the grade I'm in now. Okay, well technically I'm going to be a sophomore, but this is freshman year, so the grade I just survived. <laughs> um, ninth grade, we moved, and... Wait, I don't know. Okay, ninth grade, this is what I look like. This is my way of attempting to draw myself. I was still very... I was still very insecure about how I looked. I had... I was five foot four and a half. I still had short hair that was almost to my shoulders. I had swooping bangs, green eyes, full lips, um, unplugged eyebrows. <laughs> I, would, I liked to wear bootcut jeans with heels because I have, you know, bigger thighs and I can't wear skinny jeans anymore and I'm, I'm kind of curvy. Uh, but anyway, I discovered more about the wonderful online world and ninth grade was really when I started to take YouTube and other online things seriously. So that's my laptop. Um, and during that time, I really discovered that writing was not just something I'm good at, it was like an actual gift because all of my writing assignments that I did for school I would get A pluses on and my mom would not give me an A plus if I didn't deserve it. So I really started to fall in love with writing and I started my novel in November of my ninth grade year. I still haven't finished it, of course, 
fanfiction, I was still doing it, obviously. I have so many, so many stories on fanfiction right now. And um, I was still writing for the, the Percy Jackson um, and Kane Chronicles fandoms. I don't think I'll ever stop being obsessed with those books, honestly, because it's such a good story. Um, yeah, so there, there's me trying to draw Percy Jackson books. My favorite book of that series uh, is probably, the Percy Jackson series is probably The Last Olympian, which is that's the abbreviation, TLO. Okay, anyway, moving on from my nerdy rambles before I continue on. Um, I also, you know, as I said before, started YouTube, taking YouTube more seriously. I created my beauty channel and cover channel, and you know the story. Anyway, I moved away from Minnesota. Uh, I don't know why I cut out the part of me drawing Minnesota because it sucked, but we packed everything up in a U-Haul and moved all the way away from Minnesota. It was like a thousand and some miles. And I was trying to draw our house, but that's not a very good depiction. But we had a very long house. That could be it from the side. I don't know. We had a very long house. It was one level, which was different from our house, which had two levels. Uh, our house was in Minnesota, and I loved our house so much. I have a bigger room now, and it's amazing, and I love the sun that's down here. It's always sunny down here, and I get so tan, which I absolutely love. I started a new church, which was met with a lot of trepidation. I was very scared to go into the church um, and meet new people because, you know, I had so many bad experiences up in Minnesota, but I met some great girls. Um, I met Sydney, who plays softball. I met Ashley, who's quite tall and is insane. I'm really not trying to describe her. Um, other than the fact that, you know, she's, she's awesome, the two of them are best friends and they converged on me as soon as I walked in the door. Um, and then I met Brooke, who has such long, pretty hair, and she is so bubbly and happy and sweet and lovable, and, like, she can make you smile in, like, an instant. And I think you saw her in one of my vlogs. Yeah, you did, because she has, she has the one with the blonde hair. And Alyssa, who is so insane and crazy, and we have weird conversations. And I didn't draw him, but I also made another friend on the missions trip um, named Jonathan, and all of those guys uh, were like, Amanda, come be our friend. But Jonathan I met on the missions trip. And he's a great guy friend. We like to talk about Percy Jackson and anything and everything random. So he's really great. Um, I was still doing WordPress. A step in my sled, I was continuing to grow. I have uh, 153 followers and almost 10,000 views right now. And I was really, really happy. Um, and I continued to write about my life and start to grow myself and discover more about myself through WordPress. And I don't really know what I'm doing right now. I don't have a clue. Okay. And then fanfiction, of course. I also got a Facebook, and I started being really active on there, but, you know, I got that back in, in seventh grade, but, you know, whatever. Okay, so, paper switch. Okay, so currently, um, health-wise, health we do have mercury poisoning, we figured that out, and it's very scary and sad. Um, we can get rid of it, but it'll take a lot of time, um, but don't worry, it's not contagious, and I'm still feeling fine enough to function. I actually have friends right now, and I'm really happy I actually get to hang out with one of them today. Writing is still one of my passions, so is music. Uh, YouTube, of course, I'm doing YouTube Idol, and I'm loving every second of it. It's so much fun. I uh, play piano for the church's worship team, uh, YouTube is growing bigger and bigger, I don't have a lot of subscribers, but I'll get there. Uh, Rick Riordan's books see, still seem to be my favorite. Rick freaking Riordan, guys! Um, so yeah, all in all, I have a very happy life and I would not trade it for anything. And this is going to be kind of sappy, guys, but I love you. And if you're watching this, you know, I think you're perfect and you're amazing. And I don't know, yeah, I hope that my, my life story was helpful. It's a lot of insecurity, a lot of self-discovery, but, you know, everybody has that crap in their life. And, um, yeah, if you don't think you're beautiful, I'm gonna prove it. I got Bible verses to back me up, guys. Plus, how can you not be? I mean, God made you, so he loves you. And thank you to anybody who's watching this, um, because chances are very good that I know you outside of YouTube. And thank you for encouraging me um, to be myself, to discover myself, to just be crazy. You guys really, really made my life better, and I can never thank you guys enough. And I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video.